Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're looking at an Adele EMC Rackable Server. What does it look like? What is a Rackable Server? What does it do? We're gonna be looking at this particular model, uh, the functions, the purposes, how you rack it into something like, like what's behind me as well. So here we got the Dell EMC R640 server. This is a one RU server, essentially taking up one rack space. And it's a quite slick looking device. It looks quite nice. Obviously the front of this is just a cover. There's just a cover that's covering the internal components or the front components of the actual unit. Uh, easily lockable, so there's a little area here where you can just lock it so that you don't, you can't actually take this off. This particular unit doesn't have any hard drives inside of it because we are connecting this to a ESXi farm, to a VM or ESXi farm, and it's connecting to a storage device called the SAN, which has all of my hard drives. What is inside here is a couple of little flash devices to install my ESXi hardware. So on the front, I've just really just got a USB port on the top, I've got a VGA port. I've got a USB on the side, a little port there for configuration, and then a little slot here that I can just pull out where I get some information about the server, um, such as the serial number. So you'll see that this is actually a pretty empty unit. You can buy additional add-ons to connect into here if you do need additional features. So the back of this unit is quite simple. Being a 1RU unit, we've actually got limited peripherals that we can put into this unit. But you'll see that at the top, there's a couple of slots available, so I can actually add additional cards if I need to quite easily by opening it up, removing these slots and then I can put it in the same way as a normal PC. Well, let's go through some of these ports. So here I've got an iDRAC port. This is essentially a management port where I can run into an ethernet uh, switch uh, and then access this whole server remotely uh, on the network. I've got a COM port, I've got a VGA port, I've got a couple of USBs. Here I've got my ethernet ports. Um, this is going to be my one gigabit Ethernet and then a couple of slots here for 10 gigabits uh, for SFPs and then a couple of uh, powers here as well. We've got two of them uh, for redundancy and high availability because obviously we don't want power to go out from your server itself. So we always set them up in pairs. Uh, these will be running into two different power um, sources, so one into one power rail or into a different UPS than the other one, so that if one power rail, one PDU, one UPS goes down, I've got uh, access to the other one and gives me power. These are easily uh, removable by pulling the little latch here and the whole unit just comes out like so. I will buy a brand new one if a particular unit dies and then just slot it in as normal. The top of the server has a bit of information here that you can sort of find useful around the LED behavior, what do the LEDs mean, what's the configuration of this particular unit, and then a little th indication here around the service tag, which is what we looked at before, which is pulling this unit out. You can easily open up the unit by unlocking this and pull it up. We'll have a look at what it looks like inside. So here we've got the inside of the unit. So we've just taken that cover off by unlocking it and just removing it. And you'll see that it is quite a detailed piece of equipment. Um, I would generally not recommend you going into here and playing around with anything in here if you're not so familiar with it. Uh, you could always get your service provider, your vendor, whoever sold you the unit uh, to come in and help you if you need to do anything. But in short, we just got a whole bunch of fans right here. All right, so a whole heap of fans to essentially keep the unit cool and all of the RAM slots like right here to keep the RAM cool. Your couple of CPUs. So we've got two CPUs in here. So the fans will keep all of this unit stuff here cold and the whole server itself cold. These are the RAM slots. Okay, so your RAM is gonna be inserted right under here. And then your two big heat sinks for your CPU. So this has actually got two separate processes or what they call sockets uh, in the server world, I guess. Uh, a socket where your CPU is gonna sit on top and then your big heat sinks on top of those CPUs. Inserting RAM is quite simple. You literally just click on the little tabs here on the side this plastic little slot comes out. This is really just to protect the, um, the actual groove of where your RAM sits. And then your RAM will just slot into place to insert some more RAM, the same way that you do it on a normal PC. You buy your RAM and you slot it in. What you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to pull these levers up, left and right, to actually remove this cover to be able to access the RAM slot on this side here. Here's your couple of power units from the top. Got a couple of other peripherals where I can connect additional functionality. But then you've got additional cards right here. I can literally just add additional cards into here. Got the plate that I can remove and so forth. Here's another riser, essentially allowing me to add other cards. 
You can remove this by lifting this tab up. The whole unit just comes out. I can add additional cards into here. Oh, there you go, my little cover's just fallen off. Add additional units into here, all right? And then just slot it back into place. So in the case of this server, all of these ports right here are built into the motherboard itself. My ethernet card is this one right here, which I can you know, remove if I need to, add a different card if I need to as well. And then all of my other bits and pieces on the server. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's laid out very, very nicely. It is actually quite neat and quite packed full of features. So I've just put the cover back on, I've lined it up, you see that the latch is up and I literally just now have to just push it into place. That, and you are done. So the nice thing about the Dell EMC range of servers is that the rails are super easy to install. Essentially these rails are what's going to be connected um, into your server cabinet and also into the side of the server like this. So you'll see that the rail itself moves left and right. So you're gonna connect one of these into your server cabinet and then these little notches on the rails match up to the notches on the side of the server. So once these are connected into your server cabinet, into your into your rack itself, um, the server should just be able to slide in and just click into place on top of these little notches on the side of the rails. The rails themselves are very easy to connect. They're just gonna connect onto the side of your cabinet like so, and then the same on the other side. So very, very easy to use. The great thing is it shows me as well that this is the right one and this is the left one. So we are here now inside of our comms room. This is our comms cabinet. Uh, we are going to be racking the unit. And you'll see that I've just got a number of slots here. So essentially I'm going to attach the rails on the left and on the right. And then once that is in on the front and on the back of the unit, I can then slide my device in as normal. And then I'm good to go. I can then connect it. I can connect it into my particular, to my particular switches, into my particular powers on my left and then right and then get that on the network and go ahead and configure it and then use it. So there you have it, that is my overview. I hope you found it helpful, I hope you learned something new. If you did, I would love it if you commented below. If you have any questions, comment below. Either way, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up to this video. Also subscribe and follow my channel, Digital by Computing, for a whole bunch of more videos. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.